Today's video is a little different. Just like a lot of you watching this video, I was once a beginner too when it comes to solar. So it got me thinking I should make a video just kind of going into my story on how I went from a complete beginner many years ago to where I am now where I have installed a whole home solar system with backup that can power my entire house, um, even if the grid went down in a long-term situation. And if I can do it, there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to do this also. And I'm not talking about powering like a small off-grid cabin. I'm talking about a 2,000 square foot house like mine with four bedrooms, two baths, water heater, washer and dryer, heating, air conditioning, dishwasher, and I even power my water well off my system. So this is a large system. So going back to when I was younger, um, I was probably 16 years old when my parents let me try and install a 3,000 gallon pond with a waterfall, pretty large waterfall. And they let me just start digging up the backyard with a shovel. They financed the job, which is probably about, I don't know, $2,000 total in materials. Um, but they just let me go for it. But my parents were willing to take a risk on me. They spent a few thousand dollars uh, knowing that, well, at least, I mean, I didn't know this, but I think they would have had to have known that I could have totally messed this thing up, destroyed part of their backyard and wasted the $2,000. But them allowing me to do that, it really gave me the confidence that I could tackle any challenge I wanted to. So from a young age, my parents really instilled in me that, hey, if you want to try and do something, go do it. You're smart enough. You can figure it out. So let that be a lesson to some of you young parents out there that let your kids tackle something that looks challenging. Let them make some mistakes. Let them try and learn how to fix it. Um, it really worked well for me and put me in the position that I am in to this day. Now, during college, I worked for my girlfriend's dad, who was an electrician. I worked with him off and on for a couple of years. I learned a ton about just regular household electricity. And we also did a lot of work in commercial buildings, so I learned a little bit more about the higher voltage stuff as well. But I was by no means like a legitimate apprentice. I just worked part time with him when I could and got some good basic knowledge of electricity. Now, about 12 years ago, my wife and I decided to buy 15 acres uh, out here in central Texas. And all that was on that property, it's just heavily wooded, as you can see the trees behind me. Actually, a lot of the trees have been cleared out. You couldn't even walk the property really when we bought it. Um, but all it had on it was this beat up single wide manufactured home that had like very little insulation. It was freezing in the wintertime and it was extremely hot in the summertime in there. And before that, we lived in this nice 2,500 square foot, beautiful brick model home in a neighborhood, um, way bigger house than we needed. But our ultimate goal was to get out, get onto some land, be able to do what we want, not have an HOA controlling everything we do basically live like we do now on a property with literally like no restrictions at all. We can pretty much build whatever we want out here. But even back then, 12 years ago, land was still really expensive, even in Texas. But there was really no home on the property besides that beat up manufactured house. <laughs> but the prior owners actually get this. They actually had goats. They were raising some goats inside their house while they were living in it. So you can only imagine how just beat up and destroyed the interior was. So I've got a trooper for a wife and she was willing to go ahead and, well, we put about 10 grand into just new flooring, redoing the bathroom, all new paint, wall paneling, just to get it up to where it was just enough to live in, but not by much. So in that beat up manufactured home that we were first living in, that's really where my solar journey began. I ended up learning as much as I could on solar for about, I don't know, I'd say about three or four months. So I was reading books, I was watching YouTube videos, just on some smaller systems. Um, I ended up going with a 2000 watt uh, Ames inverter, and I ended up having to get a separate charge controller for it. I used lead acid batteries, and I wired all this up in a 24 volt configuration. I ended up building my own little wooden solar rack, which uh, I still have to this day. And that system was clunky to today's standards. I mean, separate everything, separate charge controller, separate inverter. Um, today, everything's like combined. You don't have to have these separate disconnect switches, these fuses. So I like the all-in-one systems they use. Now it has all of that pretty much built in for you. So the installation is not is a breeze. So it's never been more beginner friendly to get started with solar than it is right now. And that small system cost me about $2,000. 
and it was capable of running like a small window air conditioner, refrigerator, um, and it could pretty much power all that just about uh, continuously if the sun was out. I'd have to be careful overnight not to run too much or run the air conditioner overnight, but running the lights, refrigerator, it was no problem. And since I built that old clunky system, solar power really hasn't changed that much. I mean, you still have the solar panels, which send the power to the charge controller. The charge controller sends that to the batteries. Your inverter inverts that power from DC power to alternating current or AC power, which is what we use inside our homes. I mean, the basics really haven't changed. The technology has gotten a lot better though. I mean, lithium iron phosphate batteries has been a game changer. And it's actually affordable now to actually build a large system that can power an air conditioning, which 10 years ago, I couldn't say that. So I'm just a normal, ambitious do-it-yourselfer who's just willing to take a risk. And you know what? That risk might cost you money if you try and do it yourself. Um, but you know what? That <laughs> I call that, uh, those mistakes, your college tuition. Basically, you're going to learn a lot more through the school of hard knocks and trying and seeing what works and what doesn't than you would just by going to a class and learning about it. Really, you got to get your hands wet. you got to get your feet wet. Get in the trenches and start working on it. And if I can do it, you can also. So about three years ago, that's when I started learning as much as I could on putting in a whole home system. And all I did was watch countless hours of YouTube videos learning. So that would be my recommendation. If you are a beginner looking to do what I am doing, just start watching videos. Watch as many as you can, learn as much as you can, really start to understand wire size and how many amps can go through those wires safely. And really the breakers I would buy, if you're a beginner, buying the all-in-one systems, the all-in-one inverters that has the breakers on there for you, um, helps you tremendously in my opinion, if you're starting out as a beginner. In total, it probably took me a little over a year of just research before I felt comfortable and my wife felt comfortable with me spending literally $35,000 on all of the materials for my system. So yes, it was a risk. You might look at me and think, you're crazy. You spent $35,000. You've never done this before. Well, again, I was, I was raised with the confidence that I can tackle this. And if somebody else can do it, then dang it, I can do it too. So that's what I did. I bought the materials and I just decided I'm just going to get to work. And if it takes me three or four months to do the install on my own, I'm going to do it. Now today, that $35,000 materials, you could buy my exact same system for probably closer to $25,000. So Prices have just been coming down a lot over the last couple of years, when it comes to solar anyways. <laughs> Everything else seems to have risen since then. But you also don't have to start with as large of a system as I have. I mean, in the ebook I wrote, which you can check out at solar-ebook.com, I discuss how you can start out smaller as long as you buy a few pieces of the right equipment up front, and then you can expand your solar panels. You can expand your batteries down the road as your budget allows. And really, that's my story from going from a complete beginner all the way to where I'm at right now, which I was able to install my entire whole home system. Now, I don't call myself a complete expert. I'm not a licensed solar installer. I am not a licensed electrician. I'm just an ambitious DIYer who decided I'm gonna do this on my own. Now, that being said, electricity is dangerous and it can kill you. So make sure you understand the basic safety when it comes to electricity. So just bin watch as many solar videos as you can. Really, that's what it came down to for me to feel comfortable enough to put in my own system. So my entire goal with my YouTube channel here is to help you all get the confidence to do exactly what I did. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I've got a ton of videos already on this channel that you can go through to see exactly what I did, the equipment I used. And I even have a wiring PDF schematic that I put together in my entire system that shows every piece of equipment I used, where you can buy it, how I wired it, I mean, all the way down to the conduit size and the wire size I used. So if you're interested in that, check it out at solarpdfdownload.com. And by downloading that, you are going to be added to my email list, but it really is just me emailing you. I send these emails out every, I don't know, five days to a week or so. I'll send you some sort of tip I learned, or I'll let you know about some piece of solar news information that came out recently that I think is relevant. And I think you guys should be following. And also in those emails, you can reply right back to me with any questions you have, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. I can't guarantee to get to all of you. This channel is growing actually and pretty fast, 
I can promise you I will do my best. And I'm not going to big league you like a lot of other people do in this industry, which really frustrates me um, for beginner questions. There's a lot of people, it seems like, in this industry that feel the need to make themselves feel superior over other people by belittling beginners. Everybody starts somewhere. I was once where you are right now, so I know how it feels. And I can promise you that's not going to be my response when I do get your emails. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Other than that, that's my journey. Hopefully you've learned something from this and got some confidence that you can begin your path as well. And we'll see you all in the next video.